What is wrong with America? All right. Hey guys, welcome back to Listography. Back again with Joe. We've been doing three videos a week about a chosen band. This third video doesn't directly relate to Squeeze, but we are talking about bands that never quite broke through in the US and maybe were a lot bigger in their home country. Uh, this is gonna be a very subjective list. We didn't really set any ground rules about how, how famous they had to be outside of the US or how not famous they had to be in the US. Um, even Squeeze you know, had some, some success with songs like Tempted and other chart success and some videos that would be played on MTV and such. But I think today, if, if um, you asked most Americans, I would say the average person doesn't know who Squeeze is. Probably, maybe most people would recognize Tempted, but I'd say more than half of those people probably wouldn't be able to name the artist. So um, we're gonna get started here naming some other bands that had success elsewhere, but never really could crack the American market for one reason or another. All right, um, this isn't really in any particular order. I mean, these are just kind of five bands or artists that never made it in America. My number five, ostensibly, we'll start with that. I'm gonna go with Robbie Williams, who was absolutely huge in Britain for pretty much the entire 2000s, maybe even some into the 90s. He had just, I mean, most people in America probably don't know him at all. Uh, he had a couple uh, tracks that charted, I think in 2000-ish with Angels and Millennium. You know, he's just massive figure over in the UK. He had like 12 number one albums. And he just never, never done it. I think he's a little too British maybe to have made it here in America. And maybe that just didn't fly kind of on the pop charts in America. Number five for me, I'm going to go with a Canadian band, Sloan. Came out in the early 90s, kind of almost a shoegazy sound at first. And then they sort of slowly morphed into a power pop act. They have, they've had decent success in, uh, in their home country in Canada. Over the years, they've been nominated for like, I don't know, 10 or so Juno Awards. They won Best Alternative Album in 97 for One Chord to Another. You know, they've, they're a band that's been able to make a living as a rock band. And, you know, they've got uh, tour buses and crew and, and a whole a whole production. And I think if, if it was just built off of their American uh, fan base, they would not be able to, to sustain that. It's kind of really hard to gauge how popular they are in, in Canada. I know certain readers polls that I've seen have placed one chord to another among the best Canadian albums of all time. So obviously there's uh, some high regard for them, but then, you know, it's, I don't know, is it just like a sort of a, a cult following that they've built there? Or um, yeah, it's, it's really hard to tell as an American sometimes for these bands that, that never really quite cracked crack the the code in the US. All right, my number four, this is a really weird band. They were so massively popular in Britain that I had no idea how ridiculously popular they were. They had the number one uh, sales of singles in Britain in the 1970s. And probably, I mean, you, you couldn't hear a song by them on the radio today at all. And this band is Slade. People probably don't know this, but they wrote Come On, Feel the Noise, uh, Mama, We're All Crazy Now. They had that fun misspelling of words. But Slade never, just for some reason, you know, they had a, a glam sound. They were super popular in the 70s, but completely bombed trying to come to the United States. It's a band, I mean, I had to look up and read about them and I was just blown away. You know, their singles basically were charting in the same territory as like the Beatles with just like constant number one singles. Everything they released went to number one. And I mean, you just can't, you'll never hear about them in the States. It's just one of those weird bands that for whatever reason, just never made it over here. For my number four, I'm going with a Teenage Fan Club, Scottish band, um, another kind of power pop group from the early 90s. Um, some Americans may know of them because Spin Magazine named their album Bandwagon-esque the best record of 91, ahead of Nevermind. 
And I think people look at that as like, oh man, how could spin blow it so bad and pick bandwagon-esque? But I'm here to tell you, spin was right. Uh, bandwagon-esque is fantastic. And um, it's kind of kind of strange that they, they didn't have more continued success here. Uh, let's go to my number three, another band from Britain. This one from North Ireland, a band I like to plug as much as I can because I love them. They're one of my all-time favorites, but they just never made a dent in America at all. And that is Ash. They kind of started in the mid nineties. They were super popular as teenagers uh, with the album 1977. And then they kind of dipped and waned. They came back in late nineties with uh, Free All Angels, which had a bunch of number one songs in Britain. I think the album was number one in Britain. Uh, I guess 2000 it was, 2001. And it's just a, they're super kind of pop with metal, rock, uh, maybe like uh, the British Weezer maybe. I think people have called them that. Really into guitar solos. Just a real muscular pop song sound. One of my all-time favorite bands. Never kind of understood why they couldn't break into America. All right, my number three is going to be an Irish band uh, called Bell X One. They've put out a number of albums, and they seemed like a band that was growing in popularity. It seemed like they might break through. Um, I saw them maybe three or four times in concert, and their crowds were getting bigger and bigger every time I saw them. And then all of a sudden, it just seemed like it wasn't going to happen anymore. They kind of retreated back to mostly sticking to Europe as far as their tours went. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. They, the members of the band were originally in a band called Juniper uh, and Damien Rice was a member of that band as well with them. And he of course got massive and, and huge with uh, songs on soundtracks and, and stuff like that. And it never quite happened for Bell X1. Although they have some fantastic records, Blue Lights on the Runway and uh, Bloodless Coup are, are great. Um, even some of the later records, when they sort of their popularity started to wane a bit, the, like Arms is a really good record as well. All right, I got another British band, uh, my number two. This one people probably have heard of. Uh, the Kinks, you know, everyone in America knows the Kinks, Lola, you really got me, but they never, you know, maybe it was the, the, the Britishness, maybe it was the fact that they were banned from touring America from 1965 to 1969, right, kind of during the, the peak of the British invasion because they were always fighting at their shows, but the Kinks never, never made it here in America, really. They had a bunch of number one albums and singles in Britain, they were huge, they were, you know, rivals with the, the Stones and the Beatles. Um, but here in America, you'd never really know that because they never kind of broke through, which is a shame because they have a lot of great songs, a lot of great albums, especially kind of after they, you know, after the British invasion kind of period, they kind of got really introspective, stuff like Village Green, Preservation Society. I can kind of see why that type of album didn't catch on in America. It's very, very British. So maybe they were just too British for the States. Yeah, um, Kinks are a definite known entity in the US, but uh, I think the the regard with which Americans hold them compared to elsewhere is, is quite quite different, uh, probably a substantial drop off. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I think other parts of the world they're considered sort of on the same level as the Stones, at least, and the Beatles, and here they're definitely placed on a lower tier. Um, number two for me, I'm gonna go with Supergrass. I did a whole listography video about Supergrass and sort of asked people about what their popularity level was still like. I think it's telling that, you know, the reunion tour, they're playing all over the UK and they only had uh, two, two shows scheduled for the US. They're doing LA and New York and that's about it. Most other markets can't really support them. So, but a fantastic band. I love all their records a lot. Might, uh, might see some other records crop up when we get to the 90s on the albums of the year. Yeah, one of my favorites. Yeah, never quite never quite broke it here. People, some people know the song all right, but that's about it. The, I think the, the only, the first time I heard Supergrass, I think it was on the Clueless soundtrack. And it's a shame that they never broke it here in America. 
In It For The Money is one of my all-time favorite albums. I freaking love it. I love them. What is wrong with America that Supergrass couldn't break out here? But anywho, brings me to another band that I really like and that was huge in Britain, a uh, bunch of number one albums, a bunch of number one singles, and you know, they're my number one, not because they were the biggest in Britain that never made it here or anything, but just because they kind of fell on my list this way. Uh, and that is Blur, which literally everyone in America associates with song two, and that's pretty much it. You know, people probably know maybe that they were kind of rivals with Oasis. Maybe they might know the track Girls and Boys, and they, they probably know Damon Albarn because he's in the Gorillas. but people just, you know, it's the Britishness of these, these bands, I think, that just prevent them from making it in America. You know, Blur was a little less polished, uh, a little less wall of sound than somebody like Oasis, who had more success here. They were a little cheekier, a little more into their whole Britishness. Um, songs like Country House and uh, Girls and Boys are just super British. You know, they reference British things and they have the British vernacular. And, you know, I guess that's why they didn't make it here. But you know, the early albums were great, really kind of just fun, strong songs. Um, but they just yeah, never made it here in America, which is a shame, like many of the other uh, bands we've mentioned today. You know, there were a lot of a lot of good bands with a lot of good albums and songs that never quite translated across the, the pond, as they say. So, yeah, this last one I've got. Got some some good statistics to read. Between 99 and 2007, this band had five number one albums in the UK. They all went either gold or platinum. Two of them went five times platinum. In the US, their chart positions were 134, 188, didn't chart, 127, and did not chart. And that band is the Stereophonics, a band that I had tickets to go see once and it was canceled for lack of ticket sales. Um, I was a big fan of this band around the time of You Gotta Go There to Come Back and then their follow-up album, uh, Language, Sex, Violence, Other. Love Kelly Jones's voice. I think he's a really good songwriter as well. I'm not sure why they never broke it here. Maybe the trends at the time here weren't quite in line with what they were doing, but for whatever reason, never quite made it here. Didn't even make it here enough to play a show to like a 500-seat club. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching again, guys. Uh, like the video, subscribe, make sure you hit the bell so that you get notifications. And Joe, Kramzer, and myself will be back. Uh, throughout the week, we'll be doing another album of the year, uh, staff picks, and then next week we'll be coming back with a listography of Stone Temple Pilots. So stick around, and uh, we'll see you then.